I don't think you got my CV either because I, I tried to become your number two and you just, just completely ignored me, man. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. Yeah, I'm just wearing a bandage yeah. around my head in honour of the great man himself. Um, Patrick, Patrick do you feel honoured that he's gone to this extent? Ah. Uh, it's it's a pleasure when I see. I just wanted to make you feel at home. Do you know what? I'd, I'd have loved it, Mike. You genuinely had an injury, and it was not related at all. You just had to wear a headband. <laughs> yeah, right. In New Orleans. No, I don't. I, I take it off now. It was just, it was just for the intro. Was it a pair of tights or something? What was it? No, no, it's actually it's, it's, it was, it was, it's what they gave me. It's what Actually, they gave me. Off as well. like, yeah. What a weird man! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're aware. I broke my leg, and that's what they gave me at the hospital. So you yeah. broke your leg, so you put it on your head. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> I want to start by asking how you are because you mentioned before we jumped on the podcast that you're still in lockdown. Feels like it's been going on forever over there. Yes. How are you, Patrick? Yeah, look, we're okay because. Um, you know, we're still out of, you know, I'm still out of coach the team and, you know, um, we're in pre-season at the moment, so we're okay. But in terms of everyone else, um, it, it's difficult here. Um, mm. Like I said to you before, you know, I think we broke the real world record of um, days in isolation. So we're in lockdown for over 200 days. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. It, it's difficult times for Melbournians. Um, mm. So, you know, when we will get out properly, I, I don't know. Um, but we're trying to do our best in a, in a difficult period. But I know it's hard, but, you know, the main thing is that people are safe and, and healthy. So, you know, um, we can't do anything about that. Is at, it impacting how moment. you're it's, it's able to coach and interact with your team? And also, have you noticed um, uh, the impact on their mental health as well, That you know, getting them motivated? Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, to be fair, with our players... Not as much because they've been out. But, you know, our, our academy players haven't played a game in nearly two years. Oh, wow. So the younger generation are missing, you know, two years of football. As you know, it's to be, and they want to become, you know, professional footballers. It's very hard here. You moved into management, didn't you, when you hung up your boots at Leeds United. And we need to congratulate you because yes. uh, you won the A-League Championship and the A-League Premiers play earlier this Thank year. You. So... Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. Congratulations. I don't think you got my CV either because I, I tried to become your number two. And you just, just completely ignored me, man. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you wanted to start in number nine. I thought you were I'm trying to get any, a to anything, two. mate. Anything. I just want a job. I'm happy to take one loan. I'll take one loan now. No, no worries. There we go. Done, done oh, deal. Man. Amazing. Um, yes. But... <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> My, you know, my apprenticeship. Um, oh, is that someone's alarm? Ev everyone, all right? Oh, bye, bye, Bex. <laughs> Ca Soz. I mean, is that is that? It's um, food. It's food. I mean, it's not a there's not a fire or anything. You need to go check on Bex because that, no, that, no, that, no, that's no, all it's we need. <laughs> Managing in the the men's game and the women's game what was the what did you find as the, the one wow, of the biggest so, changes look look the, the the thing is number one i think women women unfortunately they're smarter <laughs> than men yeah women are very intense yeah, agreed you know, they, they ask a lot of questions <laughs> yeah, well, and, argue with that. They're, they're very good at like that you know they're very knowledgeable so you know if you don't know your stuff uh, they catch you out straight away yeah. where the boys are used to told yeah, do this. And you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, Hands up, so, just get on with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're very inquisitive, which I found, you know, fantastic. All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. You've both felt a similar kind of way about this club. And yet when you were here, um, the behind the scenes was not exactly... Um, all sunshine and roses, you know, and it's certainly not like it is now. I mean, we, we talk about the we talk about with Bex the, the minus fifteen points and all this kind of stuff, and and uh, all all the issues that we had going on um, off the field. Um, but in in a, in a way, is that what kind of made you guys as a team, and and obviously with 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 Simon Grayson as well? Is it where you just went, well, look, we can't do anything about that, and is it all that stuff that actually made you guys come together, and that's why it feels more more of a family than maybe other other clubs did. 
look, I, I think I sort of missed missed that um, part of the journey of Leeds United in terms of the hard times. Mm. So I, I missed the, the 15 points and, um, uh, but, you know, I, I was, I was brought in uh, with the, the, the thought of, you know, such a big club needed to be in a better direction. And I want, I wanted to be part of that, um, that journey. I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to test myself. Mm. Um, I had, you know, I, I, I had other clubs in the championship that I, I was, you know, could have signed for. Um, uh, but when I went to the training ground, um, I, I don't know, there was something special about there that I thought this is the place for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you know, Australians have a special connection with the Leeds, yep. you know, with the Viduka, the Harrys. Yeah. Um, and when you go there, when you, you know, when you walk up, a, when you go a cup of Thorpe Arch, you think, oh my God, how many Great players have played on that front pitch. Oh, thanks, how many, man. How many guys have trained here? <laughs> 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 so, like, that's what I felt straight away, and I knew it was the right decision, mm. you know, and, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, again, I, I missed a lot of that back room, that back um, room stuff. Yeah, but when I came, um, I, I just remember that the, there was a different sense because maybe you guys lost – was it that year in the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, that was painful. Oh, right, yeah. And, yeah. you know, um, as you know, I think with the signings that, you know, the gaffer made, Simon Grayson, there had to be a change somewhere that was like enough's enough, draw lines in the sand. Mm. And that's what I felt. That yeah. day at, uh, at the... Um... Across the Pennines, I'll just say that. Um, and so, <laughs> where Bex tells that story is that he bossed the whole thing. Grow up, got the winner and Grow up, mate. Looking, looking I've never past him, there wasn't that. much. But, <laughs> but as, as I recall that day, it felt much more of a rearguard performance, in my opinion. I don't know if you want to tell it a bit differently, Paddy. It was a great team yeah. effort. <laughs> yes. It, it was, um, I, I don't know, like, I, again, around that time, I don't think we had lost in about, could have been about 15 games. Yeah. So there was a real, a real belief you know, amongst the group. And you, know, you, you, you remember uh, an Australian, you know, uh, abroad is different to maybe a, a player from that was born in the country in England. So everything's, you know, I've been in England for so long, but you know, that, that bus ride to Old Trafford, there was, I, I don't know, I, I felt it, I felt on the bus that, Today's the day. Like I, I just felt it. I don't. I'm not. You know that ET sort of <laughs> ET. You know, that feeling, but, yeah, I, I knew. I knew there was something that day that was going to happen. Um, and it, even I think I, I was actually talking to you, Jermaine, mm. in the warm up. I never forget it. And you know, I think we we're getting teased, and I'm not going to repeat what I was saying because <laughs> it was it was ruthless, wasn't it? But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but. It was like we were like laughing, but I think we knew there was a job at hand, you know. And you know, when I think when opposition teams or fans they go for you, I think that's fear. I don't think it's anything else, mm. you know. Like, why would who they, they don't know me? Why would they tease me for? Yeah, you know, like. But I, but I think there was a fear that you know if they did lose, it wouldn't be the end of it, and they did. Listening on together. Other Patrick, our Bamford, uh, sidelined at the moment with injury. And you fought back time and time yeah. again, didn't you? What is it like when you yeah. are injured and you have to just keep going? How do you keep in a positive mental headspace? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, and again, look, it, it, I think it also depends on the severity of the injury. You know, Because you had a bad one, didn't you? The mm. Yeah, you know, I missed the... You know, when I got injured, I knew I missed a the 2010 World Cup, which has got picked already. Yeah. So I missed that, and then I knew that I missed promotion for the players, for the group that we trained trained so hard for. You know, so those moments were difficult. It was the support networks around me. So you know, I, I think the players were great. So everyone at the club, um, the the players, you know, never once you know did they not make me feel part of anything even though maybe I wasn't there a lot, mm. you know, I was on the outside and um, the staff were great. You know, it, it's, you have to work out, I think, a lot on your own sometimes because mm. you have alone time a lot, mm. you know. So it, it's it's one of those, again, that you learn on the way for me. 
you know, sometimes I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't watch, you know, a, um, an international game for like 10 years. Wow. You know, wow. because I couldn't put myself through it. Wow. Right. Yeah. That's a bad thing, I think, because maybe I didn't speak about it. Yeah. You know, so, um, I, and I didn't know at the time how bad I was actually tracking, you know. So, um, you know, it, it's difficult times, but like, like, like the club leads, like as a player, you know, and we've all been through it and through those difficult times, you know, you grow and you learn. Mm. And if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. We've always had a big following in Australia and people do yeah. know Leeds United down under. Um, but since Bielsa and since the return to the top flight, have you seen um, increased exposure down under for, for Leeds United? Look, it, again, it, it's really difficult here just due to the, the, um, the, the time difference and everything else. Yeah, but people like myself that are in football, we watch that. Mm. So, like, if maybe you're, um, you might might like like the game, but they can't watch these great managers and great players due to because they're three in the morning, mm. right? But someone yeah. that's involved football will watch the way Bielsa you know trains. We'll watch the, his games. We'll, we'll listen um, to maybe what he says a few times. Yeah, because you're always studying to learn to be better, and why not learn from one of the best? This is the official Leeds United podcast.